This is the Kaga, a Tier 7 premium Japanese aircraft carrier. Yep, that's right, the Kaga Bureau project is complete and it's quite exciting. The Kaga historically is quite famous for participating in the Battle of Midway and of course Pearl Harbor, but in the game here it's perhaps more well known because of the amount of aircraft it has on deck, which we will get into later on here but uh, with that let's get into the setup of the ship and the commander who is Tamon Yamaguchi. His base trait is Typhoon, increases the AA armament damage and for inspirations I have a double health setup going here with Henry J. Hyde, Wrenchman Extraordinaire, it increases your ship's hit points and then I have William Sims built to last gains HP bonus per ship tier. So as far as the skills, I have Swatting with Flies, increases the aircraft carrier AA armament damage. The second skill is One-Way Ticket, increases the torpedo damage. And the third skill is Hidden Threat, improves the concealment and maximum HP of your torpedo bombers. This is the health of the torpedo bombers, not the damage output. The fourth skill is Look At Me Now, increases the ship concealment rating. And under normal circumstances, I would select Burn Baby Burn here, but I'm checking out the concealment. And for the legendary skill, I have selected We Are Legion, increases your torpedo bomber's speed and reduces the damage to your aircraft carrier for as long as you're in the proximity of an ally. Incoming damage to your aircraft carrier is reduced by 20% and the range to the enemy ship to activate the special effect is four and a half kilometers. Upgrading to legendary rank three will increase that radius up to six kilometers. All right, let's take a look at the upgrades for the Kaga. First upgrade is flight control mod one. Aircraft restoration time is improved by 15%. And then I have air groups mod two the dive and skip bombers HP and torpedo bomber HP is plus three percent. Third upgrade is concealment system mod one detectability range is improved by 10 percent and incoming fire dispersion is improved by five percent. And the last upgrade is air groups mod three aircraft return speed is improved by 25 percent and the dive and skip bombers HP and torpedo bomber HP is improved by 4% respectively. All right, let's take a look at the loadout. And we have two squadrons, HE bombers and torpedo bombers. Each squadron has an engine cooling consumable. Duration is five seconds. Reload time is 80 seconds. And there are two of those consumables. And then you have the patrol fighter consumable, which will patrol the area and automatically attack enemy aircraft. It runs for 60 seconds, reloads every 10 seconds, and you have three of those consumables. And then we have the evasive maneuver consumable, where the incoming damage to your squadron is reduced by 50% while the consumable is active. The duration is 10 seconds, reload time is 150 seconds, and there are two of those consumables. And as you can see, as I said, each squadron type has those consumables. All right, for the auto consumables on the Kaga, we have the damage control party. Duration is 60 seconds, reload is 90 seconds, and there is an unlimited number of those consumables. You also have the fighter auto consumable, which will follow the ship and automatically attack enemy aircraft. It will activate automatically whenever your aircraft carrier is spotted by an enemy. Duration is 600 seconds, reload time is 40 seconds, and there are four of those consumables. And 600 seconds, I believe, is 10 minutes. As far as the boosters, you can see I have some boosters set up here, but that could change depending on the match. Camouflage, there is a standard premium permanent camouflage. CD detectability range and incoming fire dispersion is 4.5% respectively. Let's check out the stats. Survivability hit points is 59,370. Armor, 13 to 152 a millimeter. Torpedo damage reduction is 25%. And about the armor with the aircraft carriers, I'm kind of of the mind uh, that I have with destroyers. You really don't want to get hit. 
Aircraft, let's check out the torpedo bombers first. Hit points for the squadron is 2382. Maximum speed is 167 knots. Attack unit size is four. Eight aircraft per squadron. Restoration time is 64 seconds. Maximum torpedo damage is 6615. Speed is 50 knots and the range is five kilometers. And then for the dive bombers, the hit points for the squadron is 2035. Maximum speed is 173. Attack unit size is four. Aircraft per squadron is eight. Aircraft restoration time is again 64 seconds. Maximum bomb damage is 9,000 with a 50% chance of setting fire. All right, and then the artillery, these are all secondary armaments. It looks like 10, 14, 26 guns it looks like. Uh, it's quick math, so apologies if I didn't get that right. Four and a half kilometer range, a six second, five second, and 15 second reload time between the three types of secondary armaments. And the shell damage ranges from 2100 to 4500. For the HE shells at 2100, it is an 8% chance of setting fire. And yeah, th so you have 10 armor piercing secondary shells and you have 16 HE shells here on the secondaries. And here are your AA defenses. This looks like uh, pretty good numbers, plus you do have the auto fighter consumable on the aircraft carrier itself to help out. So in general, you should be pretty well protected if you get attacked by the red team aircraft carrier, but uh, they can still get through. Maneuverability, maximum speed is 28 knots. Turning circle radius is 1,080 meters. Rudder shift time is 14.4 seconds. And this is all gonna be run by autopilot for the most part, but those are the numbers. Concealment detectability range by sea is 10.3 kilometers. Range by air is 9.1 kilometers. Okay, let's take a look at the armor, and here you can see that it is a lot of green armor, and like I said, you really do not want to get hit, but let's take a look at the Citadel, and you can see that it is barely above the water there, and it is the thickest armor on the ship, and this was a repurposed battle cruiser at one point, but still, I think everybody knows that if you get within uh, range of an enemy ship, a uh, cruiser or a battleship, you will get citadel pretty easily in pretty much any aircraft carrier. So you definitely want to watch it, and I'm going to go with you do not want to get hit. So let's take a look at the overview. Deck full. Carrier has more units of aircraft on deck than average, and that is absolutely true. What we haven't seen yet is the Kaga has 24 torpedo bombers and 24 dive bombers on deck at the beginning of the match so that is a full deck and you might want to think about whether you're going to need to do any pre-dropping or not which we may get into later stealthy aircraft aircraft with good concealment precise bombs aircraft with high precision bombs those are awesome uh, specifications there on the overview so then the Kaga, until the early 1940s, she was one of the biggest aircraft carriers of the Imperial Japanese Navy. Initially laid down as a battleship, she was redesigned during her construction to become a carrier. The ship had good armor protection for her type, powerful secondary battery guns, and carried quite a numerous air group, and that is no kidding. Entered service in 1928, and there was one ship in the series. So, okay, that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard battle and check out some highlights. All right, we're in standard. We're in the Sea of Fortune. And first Order thing you can look at are the planes right there, 24 of each type of plane. That is awesome. When I first started playing the Kaga, I was intent on not doing any pre-dropping where you release uh, certain attack flights from your squadron as they're in air, and then that way you don't lose the entire squadron on one run. You, uh, you can preserve quite a few aircraft in the other Tier 5 and Tier 7 aircraft carriers for the different nations, and 
even the Japanese nation here. But with the Kaga, since you have 24 aircraft of each type, I was thinking you wouldn't need to pre-drop, but as it turns out, after playing, uh, you do want to consider it from time to time. Uh, I have done uh, a couple of pre-drops uh, in s different matches, not necessarily in this match, but in other matches. So here, I'm just taking off and I'm going to go out and see what is out there. I'm going to do a surveillance of the, uh, the map, as it were. And there are, I believe those are a couple of Bismarcks over there. There is one Bismarck. I think the other one behind it is a Bismarck. So we have dual Bismarcks going there. And there is the Red Team aircraft carrier. But I am going to take a first run over here at this Bismarck. 3.2 uh, kilometers is kind of close. But uh, I decided to take a run anyway. And so I am leading the target a little bit more than I had been used to. And you can see we do get several hits right there. Three hits, almost got the fourth hit, but I have kind of adjusted my aim on the torpedoes of all the aircraft carriers. And I'm having a little bit of a better time with it here. I'm coming around to take another run at the Bismarck and my airplanes are getting blown out. So I have, um, no aircraft left so you take off with a flight of eight aircraft and most of them get wiped out so I only got to use five torpedoes on that run so three out of eight got wiped out I'm going again with the torpedoes you can see I still have 10 aircraft on deck after that so I I'm feeling like I have plenty of aircraft on the deck now with the Kaga and it's maxed out aircraft and yeah, uh, as you may have guessed, this recording was from a live stream that I had done uh, right when I first got the Kaga. And so that's why you hear some of the chatter that may or may not be related to the exact match here. But here, these two Bismarcks are completely lined up and this is awesome. I really should get some kind of a score here out of this. They're not really moving around, and that is three ships that I have an opportunity with. Uh, the destroyer gets out of there with no problem, but this one Bismarck right here, he acts as a shield for the second Bismarck behind him, and we do get that other Bismarck. So we did get four target hits. We hit both of the Bismarcks with that one run. So now I am going with the torpedoes again. It is... Uh, you know, too good of an opportunity right there with those Bismarck. So I'm going to go back and see if we could deal some more damage. And we are ahead a little bit. We have captured C. We're in the process of capturing A, but we just got reset right there. But there are those Bismarcks that uh, I kind of have on my mind right now. I'm going to try to get a better broadside angle of attack on these Bismarcks right here. And so there we go. We're starting the run. And the Bismarck does look like the first Bismarck in front right here. It does look like he is turning in. It's kind of doubtful that I'm going to get any hits on this run. The first Bismarck completely evades all those torpedoes. So good for him. Let's hope we can get a hit on the second Bismarck back there. And we did get a hit on something. I, I'm assuming it was the Bismarck. It may not have been. Uh, those torpedoes did go into a smoke cloud, so I'm not really sure what we hit right there. But we did get a hit, a flooding, and an incapacitation. So the match is pretty even, and we're going to go back and start hammering the Bismarcks, one of the Bismarcks, with uh, HE bombs right here. So we're going to come around and take a run on them. At this point, I haven't used any of the consumables there on the aircraft, and you can see that the Bismarck was backing up. That is a... A big time tactic that a lot of players use 
that I play against anyway. I'm sure everyone else sees that where the ship will start backing up and even though it may not seem like it, when the ships back up like that, that is kind of disorienting from the aircraft carrier player's point of view when he's going to make an attack like that. So that was a big miss. He did not pay for that. And we're taking off again in HE bombs again. And so the fire, I think it's a fire, is racking up there. We're up to 61,000 damage and climbing. So this one Bismarck looks like he is going to try to come over here and take a run on us. So I am going to try to intercept him. There are many friendly blue team torpedoes going in his direction. Looks like he just got hit with one. We're going to try to light him on fire with some HE bombs here. And that looks like a good drop right there. And we do get four hits. And we are up to 65,000 damage. That was not a great score for those four hits. So we're going to come back around and try to get him again. This is a, a, a worse angle for me, but you got to do what you have to do. All right, so now I'm going to move the aircraft carrier because the Bismarck right there is getting kind of close, so I'm going to run away from him. But we're going to go back out here with the HE bombs and see if we could put a stop to his progress. All right, that looks pretty good. The lineup does look pretty good. And that looks like a great target opportunity there. Only two bomb hits, 67,000. So we are not racking up all that much damage here with the torpedoes. Or the HE bombs, especially the HE bombs. I guess we have racked up quite a bit of damage with the torpedoes, but not uh, so much with the HE bombs. You really have to start a fire to uh, be effective with them. And three more hits and 73,000 damage. So that was only like 6,000 damage from that uh, last bomb run. And we're going to go with the torpedoes. And he is seven kilometers away, so this is a dangerous time for the Kaga because that Bismarck is so close. So we've got to hope that we can try to take care of the situation here and remove this Bismarck from the battle. That looks like a good drop. That's uh, a plenty a good lead right there. And... Yeah, it looks like he's going to get hit with two more torpedo hits and a flooding. So that flood should be going for quite a while. And we are slightly behind in this match at this point. It's like six and a half minutes left. The Bismarck did get removed. 89,000 damage on 10 torpedo hits. 13 bomb hits. And here I'm just staying in the dive until it pulls up. And those aircraft are returning to the carrier right there. That's what you see there are the aircraft that was in that deep button dive. I I believe I hit the return to aircraft button, the, the down D-pad, and went back to launch a, a fresh squadron of eight airplanes. And yeah, so 89,000 damage. I have not pre-dropped any attack flights once yet in this match. So now we are slightly ahead. We do have two of the flags captured, two of the bases are captured. And I'm going to come over here by B. Presumably there is a red team ship somewhere in the vicinity. And hopefully we can, uh, we can spot them by flying over B. And the last remaining destroyer for the red team was just destroyed so congratulations to whoever destroyed the uh, the summers there and there is the red team aircraft carrier so we are going to 
take some runs at the aircraft carrier there. But as I'm doing this, I am mindful of the fact that the AA on the aircraft carrier is generally pretty good and you don't really survive more than one attack run here. So probably would have been wise to pre-drop here on this uh, situation, but we'll see how many aircraft we have left when we come out of the dive. All right, so we have three aircraft left and two left, one left, and there's all of them are gone. So there you go. We should have pre-dropped and preserved those four aircraft. All right, we still do have a fair complement of aircraft, so we are still good as far as that goes, and there's no need to panic at this point on running out of aircraft. And this is one good reason why I don't really move my aircraft carrier up toward the capture flags or the capture points, because the time it takes to get to the red team ships the aircraft are regenerating on the aircraft carrier itself. So if you're too close to your attack targets and you get wiped out from attack runs from the AA or whatever, you may not have enough time for the aircraft carrier to regenerate new aircraft. And because of that, I, uh, for the most part, stay far away from the action and just fly to intercept the targets. This is not a great looking situation here. I would really like to target where that island is, but I'm doing the best I can, and we're gonna see if we can nick the battleship right there in the rear end, but I think that that is not gonna work. Yeah, it just barely missed. So now we're gonna come around and take a shot in the gap here and see if we can survive. So here, we've only got one aircraft left, and what I do is I just let the torpedo go before the the lines uh, parallel out, the aiming lines on the torpedo aiming reticle. They will parallel out when you have a straight shot at somebody. If they're uh, at an angle like a cone, then the torpedoes can go drastically left or right, and you're gonna get a miss but many times I will drop the torpedoes before the lines parallel out because I'm afraid that the AA will take me out before I get a torpedo in the water. And in that way, I at least have a torpedo in the water to have a chance of getting a hit, and sometimes I do. All right, so we are in the HE bombs. You can see we've kind of depleted the aircraft on deck, but it, the match is almost over, so that's uh, that's all right, actually. Uh, there's no need to have aircraft on deck when the match is running out. Ideally, you want to run out of aircraft as the time runs out, I think. And it looks like that's exactly what we're going to do. And as I said before, we have not pre-dropped once. So uh, perhaps it is okay in the Kaga not to be so concerned about pre-dropping, but the aircraft are tissue paper thin and they really do not last that well during these bombing runs. So that looks like a great attack run. Four hits and only one fire though. And we are up to 101,000 and counting 102,000. So we have 10 torpedo hits, 19 bomb hits and the match is over. That is a big time victory for the Kaga. All right, 283,000 credits, 102,000 damage, 8 detecteds, 10 torpedo hits, 19 bomb hits, 2 fires, 4 floodings, 6,000 XP, 11,000 commander XP. We had some boosters going, so let's see how we did on the team result. A lot of times the aircraft carriers do not perform that great in matches. And okay, here you go. 1958 was our XP, finished in fifth place overall, but we did get the 102,000 damage, 140,000 credits by the time it was all said and done. Well, that's it for the Kaga overall. Uh, not a bad aircraft carrier, especially with all those aircraft on deck. You really do not run out like you do with many of the other aircraft carriers that you will play in the game. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you 
on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it. Excellent. That is awesome. Didn't really expect that.